ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुरिन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू वेरी मच रामनंद्रि वेल फर्स्ट थिंग इज प्लीज टर्न योर सेल फोन्स ऑफ नो वन हैज अ सेल फोन ओके Yeah, forget your cell phone for these days. Forget the outside world. Actually, we don't want to completely forget the outside world because we have to go outside to preach in the outside world. But at least during this time, we've come here to become absorbed in hearing and chanting about Krishna. So let us do that. Actually, uh, I wanted to sing another kirtan, but we ended up singing this Bhaja Hure Mana Sri Nanda Nanda, which is actually quite suitable for for inaugurating a Shravan Kirtan camp because that's the conclusion of this song which gives in summary the whole essence of why we should be practicing Krishna consciousness o oh mind the song begins just worship shri nanda nanda krishna whose lotus feet are the abode of fearlessness the song continues by stating that this uh, human life is very rare more rare is to attain the association of devotees uh, or rather in this rare human form of life we should taking the association of devotees we should cross over this ocean of birth and death day and night we are tormented by wind rain cold heat can't even sleep at night we spend our lives uselessly working to satisfy uh miserly masters rascals we're serving all kinds of rascals just so that we can get a little uh, insignificant sense enjoyment and that's also just flickering what is this wealth youth sons family members what is there in all this it's just like water on a lotus leaf it can fall down at any time and will fall down therefore coming back to the conclusion we should worship the lotus feet of hari which is affected by first of all by shravana kirtana shravana kirtana smarana bandana pada sevana dasure the nine processes of devotional service are listed and govinda das the author of this song states that he desires to engage in these activities so yes it's a suitable song for our inaugurating our shravan kirtan camp of course it's already inaugurated by all of you chanting hari krishna engaging in shravan kirtan in various ways but at least uh, from my side my entry into this camp it gives us some focus why are, why are we chanting and hearing about krishna this song explains that so uh, i suggested that we have such a camp or various camps in various places one reason is because preaching is expanding in so many places that uh, there are so many devotees in so many places that it's a very ecstatic proposition to bring everyone together so that we can all hear and chant together when many devotees come together to chant hari krishna it becomes very blissful and inspiring that is the nature of sankirtan in material life we take pleasure in association with people if we can enjoy sense gratification with them or if we can exploit them in genuine spiritual life which means serving krishna everyone uh, takes everyone feels more pleasure in serving krishna with others because krishna is pleased with everyone's service so if we just serve krishna alone that's not as inspiring as if the, the more devotees are serving and the spiritual energy becomes reinforced just to think of just to worship krishna 
by ourselves and think only of my service to Krishna, that is the neophyte stage of devotional service. Acharya meva hareye pujam ya shadhaye hate natad bhakte shu chanye shu sabhakta prakrita smitaha. The three levels of devotees are described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The lowest stage is that of the prakrita bhakta, means he's not really a devotee, he's materialistic still. He sees himself and God. And he worships God with great faith, but he doesn't recognize other devotees or has no interest in others, their welfare. So the platform on which pure devotional service begins is Madhyamadika. Ishvare, Ishvare tad adhine shu, bali sheshu dvishatsucha, prema maitri kripo peksha, yakaroti samadhyama. The Madhyama Adhikari is described as one who recognizes there is God and directs his love towards the Supreme Lord. He recognizes that there are devotees and he befriends them. He recognizes that there are non-devotees who are uh, simply innocent and misguided and he tries to uplift them by preaching Krishna consciousness to them. And he recognizes that there are just some people who are just completely envious, envious of Krishna and his devotees, and he avoids them. The topmost devotee, <coughs> Sarvabhuteshu Yapashat, Bhagavad Bhava Matmanaha, Bhuteshu Bhagavat Yatmani, hmm, what's the last line? Bhuteshu Bhagavat Yatmani. No, I don't remember the last line. Anyway, the purport is that. One who sees every living being as a devotee. He doesn't even think that his, his own Krishna consciousness is so intense, he can't imagine that anyone else is not a devotee. Uh, that is a very high level. Madhyam Adhikar is required for preaching in this world and for personal advancement also. So, in this camp, we will have uh, Shravan Kirtan on the Madhyamadika platform. We will not discuss materialistic subjects, nor will we promote mixed devotional service, devotional service mixed with mundane concepts, nor shall we discuss devotional service on the highest level. We may, actually, we may discuss... Uh, devotional service on the Prakrita level or on the topmost level, but uh, we'll discuss on the Prakrita level so that we may rise above that. But we will discuss on, uh, we may also discuss on the topmost level just to glorify devotees on that level, but we shall not uh, imitate that level. For instance, we're not going to say, and then Radha came through the forest and she looked so beautiful and she was looking out of the corners of her eyes at Krishna. We're not going to go on and on telling stories, even though they are on the topmost level, but that we, we don't have entrance into. We're not on that level, so we're not going to discuss on that level. Yeah, so the, this camp is arranged for hearing and chanting about Krishna. That means in the association of devotees. Shavarna Kirtana is best performed in association of devotees. That is called Sankirtan. Association of devotees is meant for Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, from which automatically comes Smaranam, rem remembrance of Krishna. And in which uh, there must be also service to Krishna. Service to Krishna is also... Kirtan, and Kirtan is also service to Krishna. Yeah, so I was saying that there, the preaching is expanding in so many places and that we bring devotees together. That's one reason for organizing the camp. Another reason is that with preaching expanding in so many places, uh, myself and others who are full-time dedicated in preaching Krishna conscious, we're not able to visit so many places. Uh, myself, because of 
some difficulties with health and then I need time for writing also, so uh, I can't travel to so many places. But actually if all devotees come together in one place, we can have concentrated hearing and chanting. Whereas if a preacher is traveling from place to place, more than half the time and energy just goes in traveling. Not that I'm going to stop traveling, but this is one one way you can all travel and we can all meet together. So, so we hope to have more of these kind of camps in future. Actually, we've been doing like that in uh, in Russia and Croatia for quite a few years now. It, just devotees come together and we hear and chant for days together. Just recently we had a camp like this in Gujarat and in just over a month we're planning to have one in Hyderabad, near to Hyderabad. So this one is, because there are different language areas, obviously this is the, the focus here is on Tamil language. I think the majority of the devotees here are from Tamil Nadu. Majority from Salem, which is just at the bottom of the hill, but also from Velor, Chennai, Madurai, anywhere else? Avadi, Avadi comes in Chennai. Anywhere else? Coimbatore, Coimbatore. Now we're talking about Tamil Nadu. Hyderabad is not in Tamil Nadu yet. They want to put it in Telangana. If you say it's in Tamil Nadu, <laughs> they're going to have a bigger fight. Yeah, so from Andhra we have devotees from Hyderabad. I think some came from Bhimavaram also. Bangalore, that's also not in Andhra Pradesh. All right, anyway, some devotees came from Bangalaru and also from Mangalaru. <laughs> also from uh, Belgaon, that's still in Karnataka. Anywhere else in South India devotees came from? Namakal. Namakal. Yeah, that's Salem district. Yeah, then? Manargudi. Manargudi. All right. Then uh, from Orissa? Just came from Orissa? Belgaon, I mentioned. We have devotees here from different nations. Croatia, there's always Croatian devotees in Salem. Russia, Poland, Ireland, any other countries? Poland, oh yeah, yeah, yes. Krishna Khan came from Mayapur, originally from Poland. Oh, he's from Austria, sorry. Excuse me. Ah, we're mixing up the geography here today. Well, at one time it was all united, between 1939 and 1944. <laughs> Bad history. Yeah, so we came here to hear and chant about Krishna, and uh, we often, actually we've been organizing these kind of get-togethers in many holy places. We've organized in Udupi and Srirangam, Kanchipuram, then uh, Pandarpur, and Tirupati, and so many places. Erkod is not famous as a holy place. It's a place that people come to for sense enjoyment. There were not such places in India previously. Now you'll see in big cities, aqua parks, material enjoyment. Yeah, the outside world is there. And places, yeah, places like Erkod are developed for sense enjoyment. Yeah, there were not such places previously in India. People, they didn't travel much, and if they traveled, they went to a holy place. And still, despite so much materialistic and atheistic propaganda, still the holy places of India are much more popular than the uh, places of enjoyment. So this is a place of material enjoyment. Uh, we've come here. One reason we've come here is, uh, well, it's cool. It's, in the summer, it's, it's somewhat pleasant to be out of the heat, which is also drains our energy. At this season, um, it's the holiday season in India, so people usually 
go here and there, visit their relatives, like this. Or they go, maybe go to holy places also. Maybe some go to air code, not so many. So it's organized at this time because it's a convenient time when many devotees can come. But actually we wanted, th there's one reason also why we didn't organize it particularly in a holy place. And this may surprise you. Because if we go to a holy place, then a lot of the attention of the devotees goes on going here, going there, seeing this, seeing that, which is not bad, seeing all the uh, different sites of the holy places. But actually, if we have concentrated hearing and chanting about Krishna, that will be more beneficial than simply looking at this and looking at that without much realization. So sometimes we may go to holy places also. And sometimes we may come to a uh, place of material enjoy or a, a, a not particularly holy place like this. But that becomes a holy place by the hearing and chanting about Krishna. Naham tishthami vaikunte yoginam hridiye shuva yatra gayanti madbhakta tatra tishthami narada Lord Krishna says that I do not reside in Vaikuntha. That's a pretty astonishing statement. Then why uh, why is everyone wanting to go to Vaikuntha? The only reason to go there is because he's there. And then he says, I do not reside in the hearts of the yogis. Well, the yogis think he does. They're meditating on him. They see him in their meditation. Dhyana vastita tadgate namanasa pashanti yam yoginaha. But he says, Narada, he says to Narada, that wherever my devotees are chanting my glories, I reside at that place. So, of course, the Lord resides in Vaikuntha because the devotees are chanting His glories there. The point is that he, He's not... Uh, the Supreme Lord is not fixed in any geographical place. Vaikuntha is not a geographical place as we normally consider a geographical place. What is its longitude? What is its latitude? But that Vaikuntha is wherever the devotees are chanting the Lord's glories. So by hearing and chanting here or in any place, uh, hearing and chanting about Krishna, that place becomes as good as Vaikuntha. So by immersion in hearing and chanting about Krishna, we should become purified. Of course, the, the holy places are very special. We're not trying to undermine that. Especially Mayapur is very special. All the other holy places in Kali Yuga lose their potency, but the potency of Mayapur is magnified in this Kali Yuga. Again, lose their potency doesn't mean they become totally impotent. But again, we are organizing here so we can concentrate on hearing and chanting. Srila Prabhupada wanted all his disciples to assemble in Mayapur at the time of Gorponima to become refreshed from the strain of preaching Krishna consciousness, mixing with non-devotees, to become refreshed and purified and to go out with renewed energy to preach Krishna consciousness in their respective locations. So we pray that by coming here together, hearing and chanting about Krishna together, you become similarly refreshed and purified and enthusiastic to go back to wherever you've come from and preach Krishna consciousness there. So this time, actually from 5 to 7, is set aside for questions and answers. So if any of you have any questions, please write them down in English or Tamil or whatever language is convenient for you, and pass the pieces of paper up to the front, and then uh, I'll, if I like the question, I'll attempt to answer it. As Srila Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita purport, questions should not be absurd. Of course, people who ask absurd questions, they don't even realize the questions are absurd. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mention, we also have one devotee who came from Malaysia. Actually, my first disciple, Lakshman Prabhu. Is he oh. here? Where is he? I don't see him. Is he here? No? All right. Okay. Please chant Hare Krishna for five minutes.